to the Monday, June 24th, Maplewood City Council workshop. Uh, City Manager Coleman, would you do our roll call, please? Certainly, Mayor. Uh, Councilmember Neblett? Oh, here. Councilmember Smith? Here. Councilmember Juneman? Here. Councilmember Knudsen? Here. And Mayor Abrams? Here. Do I have a motion for the agenda? <clears throat> so moved. Moved by Smith, seconded by Neblett to move the agenda. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, moving on to unfinished business, we have the capital improvement plan. This is a continuation of our last meeting. Uh, Ms. Paul Seth, do you want to step up to the podium, please? Thank it's you. all yours. Thank you, Mayor and Council. As, as you mentioned, we're going to try to pick up where we left off um, and see if the council has any questions. We're going to go into a little bit more detail tonight. Um, not going to take a, a whole lot of time, uh, but we want to make sure that we covered everything that the council wants, is interested in, in um, talking about. Um, so tonight we're just going to review some of the details of the projects and then we'll go back over whatever questions um, you might have about those. Again, the timeline, we've added a second meeting here. There's going to be a planning commission hearing on July 16th. And we're going to visit with the park board in August about the plan. And then the city council will have a hearing and adopt the plan in December with the budget. Again, just a quick overview. We're talking about a five-year CIP, about $70 million, uh, 7.9 of which is buildings. We're going to cover that in a little bit more detail because that's primarily the fire hall. And again, most of it being streets at 47 million. So we talked about that extensively last time. So we're just going to talk a little bit more about the fire hall, redevelopment, and parks tonight. So this is the primary driver for the $7.9 million um, proposed um, budget for the um, for buildings in the capital improvement plan. So obviously, it's the fire station rehabilitation or replacement wanted to talk just a little bit about the financing because that's the key uh, thing to take away here. Um, in the plan, we had planned to um, bond for 1.7 million. We have 2 million in existing reserves. Um, that was from land sales and other revenues. And 3 million was budgeted for potential land sale revenue and that's a part that um, is still in, in flux. Um, there are a couple of parcels of land that to be sold with the proceeds going towards new buildings, but those parcels um, have, uh, I guess there's one that there's been some offers, but nothing is, nothing has been finalized yet, and the other one uh, has not even been marketed yet. So to keep that in mind, um, that that $3 million has not yet been realized, um, if something doesn't move um, by the time uh, this building um, gets, um, gets off the ground, um, we'll have to be looking at um, probably debt financing, which will change the, you know, the parameters that we talked about last time, at least temporarily. So that's the main takeaway there is that we're still a little unclear about the financing plan uh, for the fire department. The only thing that I will talk about in terms of equipment, because most of it is just very minor, is there is a ladder truck coming up. Uh, most of our equipment, we have equipment replacement funds. We really don't have to worry too much about financing for equipment anymore. Um, however, we don't have enough in reserves for a ladder truck of, um, that would cost $1.2 million. And eventually, we will have you know, a fund that will handle that, but at this point, we don't. So what we would probably look at for that is what we call tax-exempt lease financing, and it's, it's through one of the major banks, U.S. Bank or Wells Fargo, and it's basically a, a lease to purchase. It's, it's really a, a financing mechanism more than it is a lease. Um, we use that because for this type of sale because, or this type of, of um, project because um, the financing rates are much more economical than bonding. Steve is going to touch a little bit about on the parks. Um, I've listed here all of the park improvements that are included in the CIP. For the five years, you will note that we have uh, one item that will be bonded. That's the park reinvestment for $2 million. That involves a variety of um, upgrades. Most of the rest of the projects listed there will be paid from existing um, PAC funds or park 
dedication funds. Steve is going to cover this, so I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to spend too much more time on it. Just to talk a little bit about the redevelopment, we we do have, as I mentioned last time, we do have a couple of million dollars um, set aside in the CIP for the Gladstone area, and this would be in the form of um, tax increment financing. So it will be a bond, um, but it is calculated in. Um, just just to um, just to give you an idea of what actually has been going on with the EDA fund, um, even though we haven't really been active with the EDA, there are some, um, some, some plans to be more active. Um, there has been um, you know, local government aid and tax money that has been flowing into the EDA. A number of parcels of land have been purchased with that money, including 1375 Frost, 1946 English, and 1160 Frost. We've also facilitated the purchase of the Moose Lodge through an interfund loan. So there's been um, a significant amount of activity. And at this point, I think the community development part, uh, department is evaluating various um, options to bring partners in and get some tax increment financing districts started. But we do have $2 million in the five-year plan for redevelopment. That's just the main takeaway there. So tonight, basically, um, uh, it will, the, the, the consideration is for the projects that are included in the plan and any other questions that you might have. Um, but until um, Steve gets through with his PowerPoint, you may want to wait for the questions until he's done. He's using Prezi, so it's a little bit of a different format. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So the first thing I'm going to run through is our street projects. I know we've talked a lot to you about how much they cost and how we might finance them, but I thought it'd be helpful for you to see where in the city uh, we are doing these proposed projects at. So I'm going to go from the south end of Maplewood and kind of work to the north. So this is our very southern end of our south leg. Um, the streets that you see there, uh, 2020, 2021, those are all pavement reclamation. So again, this is our uh, not are not as intense projects that we are doing. Um, you also see that our 2019 project that we're going to be starting here pretty soon this summer. As we move forward in 2020, this is the next full street reconstruction project we're going to be looking at. Uh, this one is a, a bit of a challenge. We have Battle Creek that runs along to the north there, which is an impaired water body, and you'll hear about that more uh, later tonight. But this is a full street reconstruction. Kind of moving up the leg here, we have um, our Ferndale Ivy one, which is under construction this year. Uh, you also see 2021 and 2023 areas there. Uh, those are also pavement reclamation. So you can see there's a lot of investment over the years here still in that southern leg that will be happening. Moving forward, as you know, we're doing our Frost Avenue project here this year. It's under construction right now, but you can see that we have plans to uh, do a full reconstruction of Prosperity Avenue, uh, or sorry, Prosperity Road. Uh, we also have some full reconstruction projects there around uh, Lake Phelan. And then we have a uh, full street reconstruction that involves even uh, some of our city streets here that goes by City Hall there, shown in 2024 in the brown. <clears throat> Off to the west there, uh, 2020, this is that project I've been speaking to you about, about that we're looking to possibly advance. Uh, this is due to the County Road B gas uh, main replacement project. They're, they're shown there in pink. Uh, McMenemy uh, there is a um, full street reconstruction. It's a, one of our heavier traveled roads, so it'd be nice to see improvements on that. And kind of looking at the north now, uh, you see that we're also investing in um, 2022 is kind of the year of our heavy traveled street investment. So you have Cope uh, Avenue there, as well as Jarvis Avenue. And then also we have a project in 2024 up on Woodland and also parts of uh, South Lawn and Raditz. So overall, what does that mean? We're looking at 23.4 miles of uh, street reconstruction. So this is about 17% of our city streets over the next five years. And you can see from 2020 to 2024 how many miles of streets each year we're proposing to do. And then shifting to uh, the park and recreation. 
Uh, one of the main takeaways from the park master plan, one of the biggest messages we heard from residents is taking care of what we have. And so that's certainly kind of how we've laid out this CIP. Uh, overall, that list of CIP projects, I've kind of broken them out into three main areas. There's park upgrades, open, open space improvements, and signature parks. So when we talk about park upgrades, we have several projects. Um, we have uh, improvements to uh, tennis courts and, and fences and different uh, uh, ball fields. That, that 620,000, that's over a period of five years. So that's a, an investment each year into, into our park infrastructure. Uh, Harvest Park, uh, we're proposing uh, to uh, reconstruct that in, I think the planning is in 2022 with, um, with a development in 2023. Park maintenance and reinvestment. So this is a pretty significant one. It's a uh, million dollars in 2022 and 2023. Uh, this is, this is for park development uh, and replacement. It's not the small playground type investments. This is a, this is a much larger investment. Uh, the nature center improvements we show here, this obviously depends on the results of the park master plan, uh, but we have that in there. Shelters, we plan uh, on developing, uh, building some new shelters in 2022, 2024, as well as the Vista Hills Tennis Court here in 2020. <coughs> And these were all things that were generated out of that park system master plan. Open space, um, oops, here we go. For open space improvements, uh, one of the things that we heard in the park master plan was the need for uh, trails in our open spaces as well as restoration of those. So we have this 475,000, that represents again an investment each year over a period of five years. And we also have uh, proposed improvements in 2021 for Fish Creek. Uh, this consists of uh, parking lots, shelters, as well as uh, some rustic trails. And the last thing that we heard about in our park system master plan is our, having these signature parks. So we developed this concept of kind of three signature parks. Uh, in 20, sorry, 2020, uh, we're proposing to implement uh, these two projects. One is Goodrich Park, and the other one is Hazelwood. So that's kind of a quick, kind of a quick dive on what, what you can expect to see in the CIP for our streets as well as our uh, parks and open spaces. And with that, both Ellie and I am available for any questions. Council Member Niblett. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Love, just a question about the park upgrades. Um, the fields, does any of that uh, $620,000 include lights on any of our fields? like uh, baseball fields and such? Mayor and Council, uh, they could very well include that. So there's a variety of different fields. They, some have lights, mm -hmm. some don't. Uh, so that would, that would potentially be uh, part of a project depending on the field. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Very nice presentation. I do have a comment. Well, uh, first a question and then another a comment. Uh, do you want to explain what happens now uh, in terms of the CIP process, this isn't the only time that the council is going to see this. So do you want to explain what happens? Yes, Mayor and Council. Um, what will happen is we will go to the Planning Commission and they will hold a public hearing and they will review the plan to make sure that um, the projects contained within the plan are in alignment with, uh, with the city's comprehensive plan and other planning processes. It's not their role to second guess the city council spending decisions or to decide what projects should be done and in what order. It's just their role to, to decide whether or not anything is, is not, um, violates with the comprehensive plan in any way or any other processes. The park board is not a required by statute um, hearing, but they do like to review their projects. So that'll be happening sometime in August. Um, then we will be developing the annual budget um, in, uh, in alignment with this. So the projects that we have included for 2020 will be included in the 2020 annual budget as part of our budget process and our debt plan. And so there will be another hearing by the city council in December, right before you have your tooth and taxation hearing on your property taxes. And that hearing is simply required as part of the bonding requirements for CIP bonds. So if we are bonding in the next year, we're required to have a public hearing in the, before the plan is adopted. So we would have that public hearing 
Um, what, so you have one final shot at it and the public has one final look at it before you adopt it. Good. Thank you for that. There's one thing that I wanted to add because really this document is a, uh, it's in process right now. And something came up in, in a meeting that I had with Bob Jensen and City Manager Coleman. Uh, Bob Jensen is with the Maplewood Historical Society and he wanted to meet with Melinda and I about the farm, the Bruin Troop Farm. And one of the things that I questioned was that we don't have anything currently in the CIP for the farm. And we do have some obligations for the farm. And I, I know that when I came onto the council, we didn't have, we hadn't made uh, plans, sufficient plans for the community center, and we have now resolved that. I think what we need to do maybe on a much, much smaller scale is I'd like to see the Bruin Troop Farm uh, uh, included in our CIP. Now, with that being said, uh, our exact involvement, I know uh, City Manager Coleman has asked Ron Beatty to take a look at uh, what just exactly what is the city responsible for and what is the historical society responsible for because they have a 99 year lease to run the farm, uh, but I think it would be very beneficial for us if we knew uh, what are our obligations and then we actually include something in our CIP so that we can actually plan for that, we can budget for it. Uh, and uh, Ron has got, I think, a pretty good handle on what it is that, that the city is responsible for and then also what the historical society is responsible for. But I think it's something that we do, we want to address. I think it would be prudent for us to do that. So um, once we get something more from Mr. Beatty, um, City Manager Coleman, do you want to kind of explain that so that then we can include something in the CIP? Uh, thank you, Mayor Abrams. As uh, the mayor has described, I'm working with Ron to look at that lease agreement that was signed. There were a couple of them, but the latest one was in 2009. And we're, we want to make sure that we communicate both to um, our staff as to how to plan for any improvements that will be needed there, but also communicate to the Historical Society what their responsibilities are and what ours are. And we're still trying to sort through that a little bit. Um, but I would suggest that we start maybe small and at least start putting mm -hmm. something in there and see what that looks like. But we'll know more in, within a few days, I think, about legally where we're at. Uh, but I think we want to just have the, you know, our eyes open to the fact that we need to start planning for that. Okay. Madam Mayor, Council, um, absolutely. Um, I agree. We do have a, a process for that. And as soon as we hear further what the status is of the farm, um, Steve, would you like to talk a little yeah, bit? Mayor and Council, probably what I would recommend is maybe once we hear back what, mm -hmm. what portions of it is our responsibility is kind of do what we've done with our other facilities is have, have it reviewed to see what condition things are in, get an estimate so that we, that's the plan that we use to develop mm -hmm. the CIP. So maybe the first step this year is actually having, having an inspection of the facilities and uh, developing that plan. Okay, I would liken that to our asset management plan and including that and it, that. And, it's absolutely that. Yes. And um, keeping track of all the facilities and that kind of thing, just like we do with all of our other property and buildings and equipment. You know, I think it's it's important for us to do that. The farm certainly is an asset that belongs to the city, and we want to make sure that we financially can, uh, you know, uh, contemplate that so that we have a sustainable plan and that way we can keep things up at the farm uh, the way that they need to be. So thank you for that. Any other questions or comments from the council? Okay, thank you very much for your thank report. You. Mayor, can I just add something? Uh, City Manager Coleman. Um, Ms. Paul said, outlined the process for how this gets reviewed by the Planning Commission mm -hmm. and um, the public hearing that you guys, that they actually have on that. Um, but I also wanted to just let you know that there's a lot of material in there. So when you start, if you do have time and you peruse those projects and you have any questions about them, just let us know because uh, there's a lot of information to digest. And we're, you know, as the mayor indicated, this is sort of a, a moving target. Every year we might reshuffle things and even during the year we've had to reshuffle things. Um, so. It, it is a, it's a living fluid. Doc, yeah, fluid yeah. document, yeah. So, but just keep that in mind. But if you do have questions about it, please let us know as we're happy to uh, talk through, give you more information on anything that you see in there. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda, we have uh, the communication plan and department presentation, Mr. Sharon. 
Thank Welcome. you, Mayor, members of council. Uh, I think we come a long way in two years for communications. I remember back when I first looked at the um, job description, I said there's no way one person could do <laughs> everything they want in this job. Uh, fortunately, we have a great team, Chad Burgo and Kevin Schmitz, do an excellent job of, of keeping, uh, keeping us on track and, and moving ahead. Um, I think a lot of people were skeptical. They weren't sure what the communications department was doing, and we slowly tried to build relationships with each department. I think two of those folks are here right now. Um, public safety. Uh, we've been in instrumental in helping and working with them, try to tell their story, try to show um, what impacts they're making in the community and also with Public Works. And we're also working with um, finance to talk about uh, the stories behind the budget. We talk a lot about these numbers, uh, but also this impacts the community, it impacts people. And I think a big part of our job in communications is to tell those people-centered stories. Um, I think our communication staff works well because we're a strengths-driven organization, and I look at those strengths. I think uh, Kevin has ideation. He's the idea guy. He has a lot of a lot of different. He, he's always bringing new ideas to the table. Chad is, is disciplined. You know, he the boards out front in City Hall when people are, are are coming and going, he's constantly updating those with the latest pictures, uh, the latest information. He's also diligent about working with departments to get way ahead and make sure the banners on our front page of our website are are um, ready to go and and up to date and I'm, I'm the arranger I'm the I put everybody together I'm the I'm the part of the term but I'm the Nelson Riddle of the uh, organization here. <laughs> um, you know I say that but there are a number of things that we can be doing better as as a communications department we look big picture but we don't necessarily look day to day week to week we're uh, we're good because we're we're able to move and we're able to fly on the move, but then we're able, I think a lot of times we're flying by the seat of our pants a little too much, um, which we want to nail down. And, uh, and I think one of the things that helps us, again, is our strength. We're all responsible. So we just, we just get it done. So a couple of things we want to talk about is we want to look at the big picture. But before we look at the big picture, we want to kind of go over what we talked about and what we accomplished in 2018. Um, as you know, the um, State of the city and the communicate and the community business engagement breakfasts. The communications was instrumental in, in, in planning and executing those events. Uh, last year, uh, the mayor and, and some of the other folks talked a little bit about how do we create a strategic partnership? How do we get our private sector partners and our nonprofit partners to help underwrite some of the things we're doing? We put together a partnership package and we raised almost $20,000 in revenue to help offset the cost of living, uh, which is our Maplewood newsletter. And also it helped offset the cost of some of our events like Fourth of July and Touch a Truck. Um, these are it's and you look at the budgets this is just a fraction of what those actually cost but it's again a way to help backstop uh, we were instrumental in the first ever tree marketing uh, we uh, we did a good job of, of trying to we had a goal and we, we were working to get that goal um, and then one of the big uh, takeaways from internally our employees wanted a new intranet or wanted a way to better connect with each other and so again uh, our partners in the IT department Nick Franson Chad Burgo and uh, um, Lois Knutson were, were very instrumental in helping us make that happen. And then we also, again, in working to integrate public safety, uh, to show it's a model. It's not just police, it's not just fire. When you think of public safety, you think of safety of the community as a whole. Gentlemen, I'd like to thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for saving my life, bringing me back. And six weeks later, I was back to work. Statistically, those who suffer from cardiac arrest have less than a 10% chance of survival. I got to see my fifth grandchild be born. So without you guys, I wouldn't have got to see that. June 12th was an example of public safety personnel working side by side to save Mr. Shifsky's life. The actions taken by those present, including officers Leonards and Forsyth, Sergeant Steiner, EMS fire personnel Lander, Dawson, Streff, Nielsen, and Captain Svensson are believed to have saved Mr. Shifsky's life that night. Uh, Maplewood Public Safety has enjoyed the investment from the citizens of this community, and it continues to pay dividends for the people that live here. And I think this is just one example um, of, of telling that story. I think you look at the, you look at the national media and even sometimes in the local media, um, you'd get a very, very different picture of what public safety does on a day in, day out basis. It's about advancing the quality of life in a number of different ways. And, 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 and 
thank you to public safety for really uh, embracing what we were trying to do and kind of, get, again, letting us have the creative freedom to create our own roadmap to get us to their end destination. We appreciate that. One of the things council wants to talk a lot about is, is efficiencies and better techniques. A couple of the things we're doing is uh, web streaming. Right now we're working on a way, because we have a system called Tightrope, it's an integrated system that helps us broadcast the signal on channel 16. It also helps us uh, program those boards you see out front. It also will help us webcast. Uh, we're, we're close to uh, migrating away from our current system, which will save us roughly $12,000 a year in that stream. Also, uh, you guys, as we ramp up both video production and production on, on the website and also uh, with um, public works projects, uh, drone drone is almost one of those givens. You have to have the drone shot in there, and it, it gets expensive when you when you do it for a third party contractor. But we're working with Kevin. Uh, he's getting some training. He's, he's 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 on his way to taking the drone certification test, and that'll help us connect. And then also direct communications. When I first got here, I was very very hands on. I wanted to make sure everything was getting done just right. And and again, as Kevin and Chad um, kept kept their kept working with department heads and, and people who are kind of uh, across the board in the city, it's gotten to the point where we trust each other. They, they just kind of go ahead and do their thing and we're, we're able to take a, a set of hands out of, the, out of the process. So it just helps really streamline things. Um, some of the challenges, as you know, we uh, just signed a new PEG agreement with Comcast. Unfortunately, it, it represents about $140,000 loss. Um, we're hoping in the long term things trend back. Uh, but again, if you look at the trend, we, we will ha run into uh, communications, some issues from budgeting and communications. Uh, uh, Finance Director Paul Seth and myself are working through a plan to help backstop some of those losses. As we know, the f franchise fee will be flat, but costs will continue to rise. Personnel costs will continue to rise. The costs of things we third party contract for will continue to rise. We'll look for ways to control those costs, but um, those are some of the things we anticipate. In the short term, we're in good shape. We have money set aside to do some of the capital infrastructure that we'd like to do to modernize um, the communications within the city, but in the long term, that 10 year trend, it, it's, it's there. Right now, we're in front of the wave. We have a, a, a way to position ourselves well so we can ride the wave in. Uh, without it tipping us over. Uh, goals for 2020. I want to thank Council Member Smith for helping us guide this discussion in our retreat a couple of weeks back and for all the input uh, from, the, from the team. Um, what we want to do is focus in on three things that we do really well as a city. Things that we have and we do best that other people don't do as well. That is have outdoor amenities in an inner ring suburb. We want to innovate and we want to be a responsible government, which a lot are, but if you look at some of these meetings and look what we're doing, I think we have, we have uh, some, some comparative advantage there. And we also have a diversity of housing stock, and I'll get into all these in, in a second here. Um, so outdoor amenities, what does that mean? Uh, and according to the master plan, most people live a half a mile from a park or open space. We have great recreational programs. We also have some other assets, the Nature Center, Fish Creek, the Gladstone Savannah. Uh, we have a great system of environmental stewardship here in the city. And you know, while we are car friendly because of our partnerships with Ramsey County and, the, and uh, Met Council, we are becoming more transit friendly. Um, housing stock. We have housing at all price points. We have houses that are really tough to find in the metro. That $250,000 starter home in an inner ring suburb is almost unheard of, but we have them here. Um, and we have them that go all the way up, houses that go all the way up to, you know, several hundred thousand dollars or more. So if you want to move into Maplewood as, as a young family and move your way up, there, there's opportunities there. We have various uh, lot characteristics, unique uh, needs, senior living. We have tight-knit communities. And then we also have more condos and senior living along the way. Um, and then we have an innovative response of government. As we know, we're from tonight's presentation, we're looking into the future. We're a green step city. Uh, we don't make decisions based on, um, you, you know, what, what the feel good thing is at the moment. We look, we look, and we examine what's going to be best for our city. Uh, as as we know, we have an excellent EMS care, which is important for our community. Um, we sold a 10-year CIP plan. The, right now, there's a five-year CIP plan, 
And then uh, we're really looking for we're looking into the future. One of the things we're also I'm proud to, to be a member of is our more team, our racial equity team, and we're really looking at ways to make sure that both our community and our city government mirror one another as best as possible. Uh, so what does all that mean before we jump into the web? That essentially means that when uh, my, my sort of charge for both myself, Kevin, and Chad going forward is when we tell stories, when we put stuff on the web, when we pitch things to the media, does it answer one of those three questions? How does our story best fit in those three story columns? To really make sure we're focused on what types of stories we're telling. Other goals in 2020 is a web upgrade. This is a big deal. We spent most of 2018 really diving in. How do people use our website? Where are they going? What pages are they looking at? How do they get there? How long do they spend on the page? So with that in mind, um, that's going to help design what our website looks like in the future. And, and one of the big things we know is ADA compliance. We, thanks to some software uh, innovations, we're able to not only stay compliant but know where we need to be compliant going into the future and that is a that'll be a big piece of the redesign um, and again we want to have the user in mind I think a lot of we're kind of ahead of this curve in, in a lot of ways because we've learned from so many other folks um, and we've seen when other other cities have redone their web pages that uh, you, you don't design it for other government workers you don't design it for your own workers you design it for your community and and that's and that's a big thing we have to keep in mind i think a lot of if you look at a lot of city city sites or, or municipal government sites they're not aimed for the ironically they're not they're designed for the people who design them not for the people they're supposed to serve uh just a timeline here uh right now we're working with each of the departments we've kind of gone in and shown each of the departments how they're using the sites which part of their, which pages on their site are the most popular, which are the least popular, how can we make some of the stuff that's clutter go away, and how can we make sure that those sites that the community is going to and engaging with are, are as engaging as possible. In July, we're going to start looking at designs, what this thing looks like. August, we'll, do, we'll start to do content migration, meaning uh, essentially it's like when you move, right? You're not going to move all your junk into the new house and then get rid of it. <laughs> you want to make sure all the junk is gone first so when you move to the new house, it's nice and clean. <laughs> September, October, we'll start the uh, test runs, and hopefully we're going to launch by November, December. A um, lot of this is uh, dependent on, on Civic Plus, who's our service uh, provider on this one, and then where, where we are in the queue. And, and again, you, you know, when you do these projects, there's stuff you find along the way that needs to be done, or you gotta, re, you gotta gut a closet. So, so that's, our, that's our proposed timeline. Other 2020 goals, uh, more purposeful, traditional media outreach. So we want to make sure that a lot, of the, a lot of the stuff that we do gets seen internally and we're, we're good at putting stuff on, on Facebook, but how do we work with our partners in the local media, whether it's Channel 5, Channel 4, uh, Pioneer Press, or some of our specialty newspapers, how are we taking those stories, again, that fit in those three story columns, and we're doing those special pushes. So I'm going to do more purposeful traditional media outreach, uh, continue working with public safety on sort of a broader plan. Uh, um, as you saw in other presentations, public safety had their annual report. We were part of putting that annual report together. How does that, do we do that annual report in the next year so it's even more user friendly for citizens? And then building up our social media, mayor's page, Instagram. One of the things we found in some of our video work is, some of the things we found in our video work is, um, while those two-minute stories are really nice and they really tell a nice comprehensive story, folks are not watching two-minute videos. When you look at our Facebook numbers, they're, watch they're, they're watching this anywhere from 12 seconds to 22 seconds. That's about all you have them for. And the other thing is, they're usually not watching it with the sound on. They're scrolling, they're sitting, and looking around, nobody has uh, a device out, which is good. But they're scrolling through and they're watching it, but they're not listening to it. So that's why it's really, really important to put the text on the bottom of the screen. I'll give you an example here. Good morning. Nice balancing act. What type of items do you have, Sue? It's a great way to um, help our residents, you know, responsibly reuse, recycle. Some of it, gets, of course, gets disposed. Loving it. It does take a lot of people to make it happen, but I think it's well worthwhile. Thank you so much. Thanks. 
So you see up on the screen, we had the, uh, we had the, we had the, um, the Saturday, March 11th up on the screen for a long time, and you might think it's overkill, but it was very intentional. That's how people are engaging. You want, you want to keep that key information up there. The video itself was only about 30 seconds long. We got a couple of key pieces of information, and this one was really popular, I think, so because of the happy. event itself, but because um, it was short and it gave some critical information, and this was one of our highest rated uh, videos for the, for the year so far. And here's another example from last week when you just need to get information out pretty quick. You don't have the time to do a two minute piece. This sometimes is all you need. So this video is uh, 22 seconds long. Again, on this video, the average watch time was about 12 seconds. And what we wanted people to know is that, hey, this park is coming down today, um, and it's not <laughs> going to be usable. So, you know, here's what's going on, but also here's what's coming into the future and giving people kind of a taste. So that's our social media strategy and video strategies are going to be, you know, a lot more of these quicker hit more sort of words on the screen type videos um, going forward. We'll still do the longer pieces on the important stories and the stories that have a little more depth to them, but sometimes when you need to get something out front and center, sometimes you have to be quick with it. And then lastly, one of the things we want to work on is professional development. For, so for Chad, um, he's, he's pretty instrumental in, in doing the, the handouts, the flyers, the visual stuff. And because we know those visual pieces are so important, we're going to work on, on getting them some visual design, uh, advanced classes, some advanced photography, and some uh, Adobe is the suite of software we use to both cut video and to make the uh, handouts and the one-pagers. Uh, for Kevin, drone operation, photography, and then story production. I think when Kevin came here, he was, he was really good at, at going out and um, you know, getting his shots, but when he came back, maybe not having the message so so for him is he's gotten really better over the last two years at messaging which is which is tough I mean I came from a journalism background you, you go you go out there you tell this person's side of the story you tell that person's side of the story on the city side you really want to let the citizens know this is what it really means for you and I think it's important to kind of go in there with uh, and, and help produce produce those stories and then for me I'm finishing up a master's degree and uh, I would like to get some more leadership training. So I don't know if I have I had to go this detail, but <laughs> I just figured I'd give you an update. And that's, and that's what we're going to work on for communications. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Maybe that last slide wasn't as necessary, but there's a little, little too much information. <laughs> Thank you. That was really an excellent report. And I remember. Uh, kind of before the Joe Sharon days when we had no communications department and uh, really uh, it's like night and day. So that was an excellent report and we do appreciate your work. Council Member Smith. Uh, thanks. Uh, yes, Mr. Sharon, really uh, my compliments. I think the direction that you and the team are heading really makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, one thing to point out, uh, that I think is really a great idea about adding the text to those videos is a lot of folks, uh, and we're finding this in, in my job too, where videos autoplay on social media, but they autoplay without sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So having some of that text in there can really engage folks and get a message across even if they're not hearing uh, the audio of the video. Yeah. So uh, really smart approach. And I also have to commend you for just, I think, how open and collaborative you've been about sort of me sticking my nose in, in your business a bit and um, kind of working through this. I think it's been, I think this focusing on these kind of core stories is going to be helpful. Um, so great job. And also, I, I, I will also commend you because I know I've harped on this a lot, is that um, particularly when we speak one-on-one, -on -one, you always have numbers uh, now. And I think that's really great. I think let's continue to hold ourselves to that standard and continue to try to figure out what good is before we do things so that then we know whether we made it or not. You know, I, I love getting to set my goals after I do stuff. I, it's amazing how much I make them when I get to do that. Um, but I think it's, uh, I think you're doing good work. So thanks. And I know 
it's really the team that's doing it. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and to your point about the um, about watching the videos and, and having the videos auto play, um, we know Facebook measures stuff in, in three second views, ten second views, and then how many people click. So essentially, what you'll usually have, depending on your thing, you may may, may have a thousand three second views, and then it'll drop down to three hundred ten second views. And then you're lucky if you have 35 clicks, which is a real, which is, this just goes, goes to show you the attention span. You got 11 seconds to grab people. <laughs> so, all right. Council members, anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, wait, council member, or excuse me, city manager Coleman has something. It's really not a question for Joe. It's more a question for the council. So Joe is, uh, he was our lead off on doing the communication or the uh, department presentations for the council. And those have all been scheduled now for the next couple of months. And so I, when I talked to the department heads about preparing for this, I talked to them about um, sharing their goals and also talking about efficiencies or improvements that they've made in the past year. Um, and then also the challenges. And I, I give Mayor Abrams the credit for that challenge one because when she became mayor and we sat down and started talking about things, she was asking me, okay, that's all great. What are some of your challenges? And I thought that was really insightful to ask that question. So I want to know if this format that Joe's used tonight, maybe not so much on staff professional development um, <laughs> or individual <laughs> Leader, you know, learning goals, but I think you know, that's okay to share that. Um, is this hitting the mark for the kinds of information you want from the departments? And sorry, Joe, you're getting picked on because okay, you were first. Council Member Smith, and then we'll go ahead. And then Neblet. I, I agree with the challenges <coughs> thing. Uh, one of the best pieces of management coaching I've gotten in the last couple of years. Uh, was to tell me I should spend 80% of my job when I'm talking to leadership at my company, or talking about the things that are not going well and what we've learned and what we're gonna do differently and only 20% of the time talking about the wins. Mm -hmm. And you know, my, my coach's perspective being, you know, the wins are sort of self-evident. It's, it's what you've learned from the things that haven't gone well that really shows your mettle as a leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that's, but here's the thing. As, as leaders, you also have to create a culture and an environment where it's safe to do that, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. it's incumbent on us and incumbent on City Manager Coleman to create a culture where people aren't afraid to talk about something that didn't go well mm -hmm. and the fact that they learned it. So it's, it's a two-way street, mm -hmm. you know, and we need to make sure as a council that we're making people comfortable enough when they come to do their reports that it's okay to talk about a failure and to call it a failure, but say, hey, here's what we learned. And that mm -hmm. it's the project that failed, not the person that failed. And those are really different things. So um, I think that's a good path to be on. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Niblett. Thank you, Mayor. In answer to your question of whether or not we're hitting the mark where we wanna be, I think I can say yes. Yeah. Um, I can only recall what I used to see or not see out in the public before I'm sitting on this council. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot, but I see a lot now. And we have a presence and I appreciate it. And um, it's information, it's just information that the community deserves to have and should have. Keep up the good work, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Juniman. Thank you. I think the one thing, though, that is good about like what Joe did tonight as well is that we need to encourage and allow the staff to tell all the good things they've done as well, because this is an education piece for the public. Mm -hmm. It's not just mm -hmm. stuff we need to know about putting a budget together. It's, look, this is what we're doing with your money. You know, this is the community we're building, and I think they deserve to know that. And positive stuff is good. Yeah. Thank you. Councilmember Smith. Thanks, Mary. Now we're running a little ahead, so I'm indulging for a minute here. But um, I think I really, I also really appreciate the wins we're talking about as far as kind of costing out and efficiencies. I think a lot of times when we come at the budget, we come at it from a very holistic perspective of saying, here's the base budget, there's merit, there's this incremental thing we want to do, so that's our budget. Mm -hmm. And to hear about the efficiencies that are happening 
big and small underneath that create value uh, for for our our operations and ultimately for our taxpayers to give us more room for those incremental pieces without having to raise the levy for every single one is important. And I think in the past, we've sort of glossed over those and just taken the base number as the base number and not understand the dynamics that are going on underneath. Um, so I really appreciate that. I think the deeper we can get into some of that, uh, the better, because that's, um, that's really important for us to recognize. Thank you. Anything else? Council Member Knudsen. I have to comment. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I like the idea of um, the transparency, the dialogue, um, sometimes in the more of an informal way. Like the staff is working on um, the proposal for trash hauling, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of work. So I got up at 3.30 this morning to make sure I read all the documents and created, the, and that's, that's really in response to um, what the staff expects of us and what we expect of them. It's an exchange of value, so kudos to everybody, and sorry I'm a little sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I was still up at 3.30 reading mine when he was getting up to read it. <laughs> Dedication on the council, that's great. And staff. And staff, absolutely. So, uh, anything else? All right, then we will adjourn our work.